Welcome to One on One. I'm Greg Bassey, your host from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper. It's a big day here at PAC 14. It's hot in Salisbury. It's summer. And when it's summer and it's hot, we've got our friend, Delegate Carl Anderton. Welcome, sir. What are you trying to say, brother? How are you doing? The heat is on, is the what I'm trying on. to say. Well, bringing heat to the streets. That's what we do. Well, we waited uh, so long for it, and I'm glad it's here. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I um, applaud your <laughs> desire to enjoy the heat, you know. Um, now, you were doing all your work this winter when it was cold in Annapolis, and having been a Senate intern in the winter of mm -hmm. 1978, I know what it's like to be in Annapolis and the cold and the legislature and all that work that goes on, work, work, work. You experienced all that. What happened for you in the legislature this year? Let's get back to the 1978 <laughs> thing right quick. <laughs> yes, I was a Senate page. Yeah. 1978. 1978, yes, wow. I was 17 years old. Wow. So what was that like? It was great. I lived in this little uh, apartment that these people had on Fleet Street. Um, I know where Fleet Street, yeah, absolutely. And I would yeah. walk to the State House every day, mm -hmm. uh, and I got uh, tortured by um, general many of the lawmakers. And the, my favorite story was I was sent to go to um, uh, Little Campus Bar, which is now has a new name, Galloway Bay or something like yep. that. Mm -hmm. But Little Campus was great because it was a mixture of uh, the Naval Academy people and St. John's people and uh, General Assembly people mm -hmm. all mixed in at this bar. And this is a smoky, dark bar, uh, bar on the left, dining room on the right. And I had to go in there and find one of the senators. I think it might have been Senator Parolsky. Was there a Parolsky then? Rich Parolsky? Someone, someone like that. And I just remember the fear of standing there at that door and I was going to open this door and walk into this bar and look for the senator that I didn't know, having been sent to find him. And the terror. <laughs> really? The sheer terror. So then you flash forward uh, 40 years later. I'm working at the, uh, the Annapolis Capital newspaper. I'm having my going away party at that same bar. And I couldn't even focus on the people there because I was just inside the bar looking at that remembering. door. Remembering standing on the other side of that door. But this has nothing to do with what we're here to talk about. <laughs> That's called filler, brother. Yeah, so as a, as a kid, I got a real right. experience in Annapolis. And I think it was different then. Marvin Mandel was the governor. I'm sure it was very different in yeah, Mar <laughs> Marvin Mandel had just been picked, uh, kicked out. So Blair Lee, I think, was the governor okay. then. He was the acting governor. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were waiting for Harry Hughes to get elected. And I guess Harry got elected in 78 or eight, 78. He got elected yeah, in 78, yeah. in yeah. November of 78. So it was right before. Uh, yeah, so Blair Lee was the governor, and Harry Hughes was, was going to get elected that November. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's, man, that's that's a long time ago. A very heady experience yeah. for a kid. But yeah. you, went, you went through the same thing when you got thrown in the fire up there. Yeah, you know, uh, fast forward you right. know, several decades. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Were you even born in 1978? I was. Okay. Yes, yes, I, I was. Uh, I was alive on this planet. Okay. Um, not yet functioning really as a child or anything, <laughs> but I was alive, you know. Yeah. Potentially, you know, um, about to, I think we were uh, on the cusp of uh, kindergarten. Kindergarten? Yeah. So we were still, you know, making mud pies. That's and great. All that. That's so, great. Yeah. But yeah, so when you first went up there, yeah. it, was, it was kind of the same experience. Walking in these rooms and not knowing who's in there and who you have to be nice to and who you're supposed to be mean to and stuff like well, that. I, you know, I'm, I'm not mean to anybody. So, you know, it made it easy. You know, just go up there and love everybody and you'll be all right. You know, and this worked well. So I saw recently you had a news conference with our great mayor, uh, Jake Day in Salisbury, mm -hmm. and, and he actually took the time to thank you uh, for some of the accomplishments that you bestowed um, on the community, perhaps, in your role as a, as a delegate. Talk about what he went through. It was a, quite a list. I don't really know about bestowing anything, <laughs> brother. But, um, well, things you worked for yeah, and accomplished. Sure. Well, I mean, it's a team he, effort. He you know, wanted obviously. to go to yes. the trouble to give you credit. And I appreciate that. And, and it, it was... I mean, it was it was an amazing experience, and, I, and I'm I'm grateful for that. But you know, it's uh, there's nothing done unilaterally in Annapolis. You know, um, yes, was it you know could would it have been me who went you know to the governor to ask for the things uh, to be placed in the budget or, or certain legislation? Yes, but uh, without the help of the entire General Assembly, from the the Speaker and her staff to the Senate President, his staff, you know, our local delegation between you know. Um, Senator, uh, Mary Beth Carroza, you know, Senator uh, Addy, um, you know, Chris, Johnny, Cherie, you know, having the speaker pro tem right down the road, 
you know, Wayne, um, all of us together, you know, it's kind of how we make things happen. But, um, but it, you know, it, it was, it was a good session, you know, uh, locally, you know, a lot of the things that were asked for were, were granted, you know, all the budget requests, you know, we passed a couple of good bills, you know, it was pretty neat, uh, seeing, uh, Things take place the way they do behind the scenes with negotiations on legislation. You know, as you know, we've been working on the, the highway user revenue legislation for quite some time now. And uh, it was a priority of ours when we ran in 2014. And to finally see that come to fruition is amazing. But to, to get to the point of where we are today uh, was an interesting, um, interesting, uh, you know, episode, I guess, if you want to call it that. And I'm glad I took notes of the whole, of the whole journey because... One day you'll look back at it and laugh, but you know the the ebb and flow of are we getting this done? Are we not? You know what's the negotiation? Oh, they want this, we want that. They want something different, so we got to vote for something different to get this to come over to here, and just the back and forth to get things done is is uh, is you know it's just interesting to watch, and let alone be in the middle of. And uh, well, you talk about highway user mm -hmm. revenues, and someone said to me recently, they were like, "Well, everyone was for that, not just Carl." And I was like, "But Carl got the thing done. Carl kind of quarterbacked this thing, or, or rode shotgun on it at least, um, and mm -hmm. he was the one who certainly kept me informed where it was headed. And it wasn't always a done deal. There was a lot of work that had to be done, and this was a a move to return uh, highway funds to right. the counties, money that had been taken out during the recession when the state was going through a rough time. And those monies are needed to repair roads in our counties. Yeah, it was difficult. And, and, and yes, of course, everybody supports it. I mean, who doesn't want clean, safe streets in front of their house, you know? Uh, but the problem was the money's already spent. Right. You know, the state had been using it for the past decade or more for state projects around. around. So it's all been bonded out. You right. Know, paying bond debt on different projects and things. And so, you know, they really had to maneuver and cut things to free up that funding to return it. So... That was where it became interesting. It wasn't the fact that, you know, everybody was like, yeah, let's pave streets. It was like, okay, what are we cutting to do this? Right. And that's where the negotiation came in. And, and it was really interesting, again, to, to see, you know, how that came to pass and, and to be a part of it. And, uh, you know, so now, you know, we should start to see things happening. I mean, the county and our municipalities here have done great with the amount of money that they have been allocated right. over the past. But now that that money is increasing back uh, to historic levels, um, it should be, you know, a, a much more um, rapid restoration of our roads and sidewalks right. uh, throughout the county. So, you know, again, you know, it, it was a team effort. And, you know, uh, of course, I got to mention my uh, Senate sponsor, you know, Senator Corey McRae out of Baltimore City, you know, and it's always, you know, funny, it's a little joke in Annapolis now. It's like either, you know, for a long time, you know, Wicomico was, you know, on the eastern shore was kind of over here and there were bills for Baltimore City and Prince George's. And now, you know, it's Baltimore City. Oh, oh Wicomico gets a piece of that. You know, Prince George's, Wicomico gets a, a piece of that. And so, you know, we, if there's something that's going to benefit us here, you know, we're going to do our best to go after it. And, and that was going to be your biggest challenge because yeah. your predecessor certainly was chairman mm -hmm. of the of the right. budget committee. Uh, he had great discretion in terms of where money went. Mm -hmm. um, there almost wasn't a legislative process when he was involved. If someone could get him on the phone, get his ear, he would find a way to get the money in a bill that right. we needed. Um, and you were coming at it from a completely different... Uh, okay, you know, it's on 180. You're, yeah, you're not able to come at it from a position of power. You're having to do it from a position of... Uh, lobbying and and, uh, and and negotiating to get what we need. Yeah, you know, like the Junior Achievement, you know, um, they they you know have done a phenomenal job fundraising for that finance part. That's going to be really a game changer for our kids, you know, moving forward financial literacy and and learning how to function as an adult. You know, to be a steward of your finances is one of the more important things we can teach someone, and so. To have this facility set up here, it's the only one on the eastern shore, uh, you know. So it's it's a total game changer, and they've done a phenomenal job uh, fundraising in the private sector, but they need a little help from the state, and so, you know, they were asking for a million dollars, and so you know we went to the governor, and you know we were uh, asking, you know, trying to keep our 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 ask kind of at a minimum. So we were, can we have five hundred thousand this year and five hundred thousand next year and 
And, uh, you know, so, you know, we kept working on different projects and then you know, went back and said, hey, you know, can we get it all now? And Well, but, but the way you did it, yeah. this is what I watched. We haven't mm -hmm. talked about this. So what, what I see is the Junior Achievement is a great idea. They've got a lot of local money coming. They got Purdue and yes. Henson to work together for the first time ever on a grant. Uh, they're doing a lot of local fundraising. They're not building a new building. They're converting an old building. Which so, is great. Which is great. I always I was like, why do they need a new building? You know, no. there's plenty of buildings around here. Right. That, you know, so there was, you know, there was th that whole thing. Mm -hmm. But so then, like, you, the governor's going to be in town, and you get with the governor. You're like, governor, while you're here, I guess he was at Evo, maybe doing mm -hmm. the thing with the vaccines. Can you look at this? Here's the junior achievement bloopers. Oh yeah, remember we talked about it. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, and they need a million dollars. Yeah, okay, yeah. So that, you know, we take his picture, looking at the blueprints, you know. I didn't even know y'all took the picture. Y'all yeah. are sneaky, I'll tell you that. Right, so right. it's like, so it's, yeah. it's a plan in his brain, mm -hmm. and then budget time comes, and it's like, Governor, right. remember the thing in Salisbury, that junior? Yeah, yeah, remember how, what a great I think? Yeah, yeah, well, they need a million dollars. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's, that's how it seemed like it worked. It's pretty close. <laughs> it's pretty close, yeah. Uh, you know, the Governor, again, has been, he's been phenomenal to work with, you know, him and his entire team, and... Uh, you know, so so, you know, to be able to just to get, so for us that half the battle is just keeping something in the budget instead of getting something put in and then holding on to it. Right. It's just the holding on part because we're going to get it put in. You know, and uh, so yeah, it's been uh, an amazing journey w with that project. When they reached out to to me last year asking for help, and and uh, you know, it seemed like a pretty tall order. It was absolutely. You know, anytime you're asking for for any state dollars. Uh, to be used in a project, you have to compete with 187 other legislators right. for their projects and their districts, you know. And so, for us to be able to get our hands um, on some on some funds uh, to bring home, bringing our tax dollars home, that's the way I look at it. I'm like, look, if we're sending our tax dollars to Annapolis, let's get back what we can, right? You know, and if we get a little extra, we'll do that, and right? So, and and in the city, there was one which the mayor thanked you for. There was, a, I think, a planning, some planning money for maybe one of the trails. I forget what it was. Uh, it was just like five hundred thousand yeah. dollars. But but municipalities hate to spend money on planning because then if they can't fund the project later, they kind of feel like they wasted the money on planning. Right. So you get the state to pay for the planning, and then you focus on raising the money for the actual project. Right. And that's what's happened in this case. And he went to great lengths to thank you for that. Yeah. So instead of using that five hundred thousand. You know, from that the city would fundraise to do the planning, they can now put that towards the project, right. which gets them a, a bit of a head start. And that's kind of the whole point is, is uh, you know, it's all our tax dollars. Right. So let's put it to use, you know, and supplement local tax dollars with state tax dollars. You know, I mean, you're in, you know, when, uh, when I'm sitting at home, it's my left pocket, my right pocket. Right. But nonetheless, you know, let's, you know, let's supplement those. And, and uh, you know, so... We've, we, I think we've done a pretty good job with that so far, and, and uh, you know, we still got a ways to go. There's a lot of projects that are coming up, and I'm looking forward to being a part of that, and uh, you know, we'll see what the future takes us. And your support, too, for the Blackwell Library Project on the SU absolutely. campus. Absolutely, um, yeah. That's going to be yeah. a really cool plan. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, we were in there a couple of years ago, and they were talking about the vast, so vast shortage of just general learning space. Right. You know, and you want your college to grow. We have a beautiful gem over there, that university. And so, uh, you know, to be a part of that, you know, was also uh, amazing. That's one of the things I'll remember the most, you know, are, are, are these little projects that you've been able to be a part of. Uh, me being a tangible person, you know, I learned by doing. Uh, and so to, to see these things being built and things, you know, been part of legislation, buildings going up and things like that, those are the things 30 years from now you'll look back and say, Oh, that was fun. I remember that, you know, and that's the, that. That's some of the cool stuff about going to Annapolis. You know, it's just to be able to to look back at you know things you've done and been a part of uh, in certain ways. And so, but again, you know, if it wasn't for our team, you know, it'd be much more difficult. You know, we have some great folks here uh, that I get to work with every day, and and um, you know, so I thank the voters all across the Lower Shore for sending these particular people to Annapolis. Because if it wasn't for these particular people, uh, it, it, the job may be that much more difficult. So many of the people, elected leaders and potentially elected leaders, are fighting these culture wars. Um, but what I see you doing is just focusing on getting stuff done. That's the way it's supposed to be. You know, you, you're elected at this level to, to, to get stuff done, to work for your people, as I like to say. You know, you get, give my people what they want. 
you know, and, and that, that's it. I mean, there's nothing else. You know, it's, you know, if you're struggling, I'm struggling, and so I'm going to do what I can to help you out. You know, all that other stuff can take a back seat. There's a time and place for that, but it's not now, not right now. You know, let, let other people have those discussions, and we're going to focus on getting you right. And, uh, you know, so that's just been my mentality since day one. You know, again, I think it goes back to being a mayor and a council member where it's nonpartisan, and all your concern is, okay, who's picking the trash up, who's cleaning the ditch, who's paving the road, and how are we putting people to work? And so we'll just carry that forward. Uh, it's election time. We've got a primary coming up here in the end of July, uh, mm -hmm. just like seven weeks away, six weeks away, hard to believe. Um, you had an opponent for about a minute, uh, and then you don't have an opponent, so you're running unopposed uh, this November uh, for House of Delegates again. Um, but we've got some tough races in the county. We've got 26 people running for different school board seats, which is just unprecedented, unbelievable. Uh, and we've got a hot race for county executive on the uh, Republican side of the primary. You want to talk about that a little bit? So f as for me, you know, I'm, I'm ever blessed. I'm just so grateful to the folks who sent me to Annapolis. So you trust in me. And, and, and I try to wake up every day trying to never, ever betray that. Uh, and so, you know, to, to be able to, to, to know that we can go back again and continue to work is just truly amazing. And it's something that I will cherish for the rest of my life. Uh, you know, it, so we're still out door knocking. I'm campaigning against myself, you know. Uh, some days I feel like I'm going to win against myself. Some days I'm not sure. But, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, um, it's just been an amazing, my goodness, I have just been so blessed by the folks that live in, right around here. And, uh, you know, so I work every day trying to pay them back for their trust. I, I think he didn't answer my question. As for the other races, <laughs> so, well, you know. Any thoughts on county executive? You wanted to be county executive for a long time, and you decided you would be well, more season, effective where you yeah, are. There, there's a season for everything, you know, and, and it was it's not our season, you know. Our, I think we've proven, especially this session, where we are most impactful, and that's in Annapolis, uh, working for our neighbors. But, uh, you know, it's an interesting race. I mean, if you, you know, social media, you know, one candidate is clearly you know, has a social media presence where the other one doesn't. You know, now will that translate over into reality? I guess we'll find out together. Um, you know, I um, I will say, you know, that um, the, like, is it incumbent if you've never been elected? Yeah, I, it's a it's, it's quasi-incumbency, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if, I mean, if, if you're, you know, appointed all in favor say aye, that's not, you right. weren't elected by your constituents. So it, the, the acting county executive, you know, um, I think it's done a good job, you know, so far. I mean, there are a lot of things I would have done differently, but that's, a, that's what makes life a, sure. special. You know, the, the uh, candidate who's running, uh, you know, she came and visited us during session in Annapolis, which I thought was really amazing that they would take, she would take the time to come up there and learn about the process in Annapolis firsthand. Um, you know, no one else did that, you know, running for executive. Uh, but she, you know, she came and spent the day and learned, watched how we, the process worked on different things. And, uh, you know, so that to me spoke volumes. Um, but, you know, uh, we'll find out together in, in July, you know. Right. Well, whoever gets elected, and there's a Democrat running, Ernie Davis yeah. is running in November, but whoever gets elected, you're going to have to have rapport with them somehow because you're going to kind of be their point person in Annapolis. We'll work with whoever wins. Absolutely. You know, we have to rise above any of that, you know, Political mumbo jumbo stuff. I'm not. I I don't have time for that. My folks that sent me to Annapolis don't have time for that. Those are my boss. I work for them. So you know we will, whatever feelings or whatever will be gone the day after the election, and they will be my new best friend, and I'll work for them just as hard as anybody else, regardless of their party affiliation, who they are, what they are. Uh, the goal is to get things done, and we'll continue to do that. And on our county council, of the seven seats, three members will be leaving for different mm -hmm. reasons. One's retiring, one's running for another office, one is running for another office. So three people will leave. So the, the county council, in theory, will be vastly changed as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I have to give credit where credit's due. Uh, when it comes to the county council, uh, council president, John Cannon, has been phenomenal. Anytime I've needed anything from Annapolis, he's quick to answer the phone, quick to return my call. And, and those are the things you need. So, you know, folks that are running for county council, I, I hope they have that spirit within them of communication to let us know in Annapolis what's going on here during session because it ha things happen so quick. The turnaround is so quick on issues that 
we need that. And so, you know, I just, my hope is that the folks that are running just, just have that, that desire in their heart that they want to be communicative, not only with us, but with their constituents. Lou Riley used to tell me, uh, the senator a million years ago, Lou Riley used to tell me that it was so important for him as a, a delegate and a senator and then as agriculture secretary to have people in the community that were on top of things that he could get caught in the mass of, an, of Annapolis, that, you know, that kind of pretend world up there. Call home and find out what really mattered, what people right. were thinking about, what they cared about, you know, people that he could rely on. Do you have that same sort of data bank of people? Yeah, we do. And, uh, you know, the folks that, that know who I call, you know, just know how much I love you because you, you do bail me out quite often. Um, so, yeah, no, we do, absolutely. And uh, the goal is to now have that with the elected officials. We do have that. You know, Josh Hastings is another one. Anytime I need something, he's right. going to answer. Environmental. You know. Does yep. anyone know more about the environment right. stuff than Josh? So, you know, we, we, have, uh, we have some good folks there, and it would be nice to add some some new folks coming in to, to help, you know, expand upon that. And, yeah, and then Cannon um, certainly knows the business community in Wicomico, so I think mm -hmm. he'd be a great asset. You're, mm -hmm. You can call certainly Mike Dunn or Bill Chambers from mm -hmm. Greater Salisbury Committee or the Chamber, but they're going to have their own, especially Bill Chambers, yeah. they're going to have their own they're sort have of the chamber set of talking points. You want points. more of the flat, right. you know, truth. Exactly. Right. Not saying not the saying at Bill, all. Yeah. I'm not saying that. <laughs> right, right. You're my man. Right. But I'm just saying. But they have yeah. their right. It's not it's agenda. Right. Agenda is a bad word a lot of times. No, but no, it's no. Not it's men not men is a bad word. But I mean, you they represent. You're yeah. working for your people. Yeah. So you have to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when a lobbyist comes up to Annapolis. You know, if they're for or against, you know, you're hearing them come up with the the reasons why. And of course, you can pick through them. And you can say, Oh, I know what you're saying that because of this. You're saying it because of that. I get it. You know. But you know we're able to kind of look through that. And so, um, you know, and, and, and here locally, everybody's been great. And I do, I reach out to everybody quite often uh, during session, you know. Um, and it's, um, it just makes our job easier when we have that connection, you know. How are things going to Delmar? Things are going great. New mayor up there. New mayor, yeah. We had the shooting uh, last year, the officer, uh, yeah, I need to uh, follow up on this in terms of where they are in terms of recruitment. Um, so they have folks that are that are coming out of the academy yeah. and going in. So you know uh, they're they're making things happen uh, up there. They have an agreement with collective bargaining, and and those are things that have been wanting to have happen for quite a long time. You know uh, they're going to be hiring a new town manager. You know uh, Sarah, who's been there thirty eight years. I really? found out. Yes, oh my golly, she's retiring uh, twenty years as town manager, and and um, I had the chance to tell her. Um, when I, you know, in front of the last council meeting real quick that, you know, uh, she helped me, uh, whatever perceived success I have in Annapolis is partly because of her, because we used to butt heads when I was mayor, you know, things weren't going fast enough. Things, we weren't doing this, we weren't doing that. And then she's, you know, reeling me in saying, no, things work this way. They work, they work like this. We have to do it like that. And so the ability to, to have her, um, you know, us kind of go at it like that and still be, you know, friends, you know, still have a ton of respect for her, you know, kind of, again, help mold the way we are in Annapolis because some of the arguments, conversations, debates can be contentious, but you have to remember you're just punching the clock going to work and they're still your family. And so, right. you know, I was able to, to tell her, you know, how much I appreciated that uh, back then. I didn't know it back then, but now how much right. I appreciate it. Well, I mean, you're like a new elected official, a new politician. She's uh, not a bureaucrat so much, but a really... Right. Uh, smart, focused person knows all the administrative is, you know, what works, doesn't work. She's running a town. Really tricky situation yeah. running a Maryland, the two Maryland towns. side right. and the Delaware side. Yep. Two commissioners and council and two different mayors. Mm -hmm. Really, the laws from Maryland, laws from Delaware, just all that confusion. So she's rock solid on that. Um, and you just full of ideas all the time. Always just running a mile a minute, man. Yeah, <laughs> right. absolutely. You know, we need to do this, we need to do that. Need, you know, she's like, time out. You know. so, <laughs> yeah. So I need to write about that. When's she retiring? Because I have to write about that. Uh, very, this month. Okay. Yeah, this month. I uh, need to get on that. When yeah. I was a reporter, uh, Karen Horsman was actually mm -hmm. the uh, the town manager. It's that long ago. So I remember when she came in and Sarah was new. Right, yeah. <laughs> wow, that was a, <laughs> That's a long time ago. Well, you were in Annapolis <laughs> in 1978, so yeah. I was. You know, yeah.
<laughs> so what's going to happen this summer? At, uh, there's usually some study sessions this summer. You got anything percolating up I, there? I think with the election cycle, uh, those things are going to kind of wait till the fall. Okay. And then we'll start getting into it. But, uh, but we're busy, you know, constituent issues, you know, s septic issues all over the place. Uh, we're working on and you, you don't know, want to fight the culture issues. wars you just want to work on consistent issues and get we're things just trying done. to get to work and and uh you know um uh, th that stuff you know can take care of itself you, you don't want to weigh in on what books should be in the in the libraries at the schools and critical race theory and where whether we should wear masks you, you don't want to i think we should operate in common sense um you know and we have a school board for that which <laughs> Is going to be a very interesting election because yeah. there's uh, a lot of folks running, a lot of good 26? folks running. So, yeah. you know, they, that is their charge to keep is to decide those things. And, you know, so that is uh, how we handle that. So I try to stay in my lane as best I can and uh, just try to make the folks that, you know, sent me to Annapolis happy as they can be. How can people get a hold of you? As always, you know, right here in the lower quadrant, third. <laughs> Lower third of your screen uh, is my cellular phone number, 443-359-1335. Uh, call me anytime, and uh, I'll do whatever I can to help you answer any questions you have. Uh, anything you need, uh, we'll be right there. He's Delegate Carl Anderton. He's former mayor of Del Mar. He's our delegate in District 38B, and we were thrilled he had time to be with us here today on a hot day in Salisbury. Carl, thanks for being here. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, brother. This is Greg Bassett from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper, another edition of One on One right here on Pack 14. First Shore Federal is proud to support PAC-14 and one-on-one. -on -one. We'd encourage every business to support PAC-14 and, and pick a program and support it and let's make a difference.